Let's uh, call the meeting to order then at 6.06 .06 p.m. on January 7th, 2019, for a meeting of the Hazen Union School Board. Does anybody need a hard copy of the agenda, tonight's agenda? I have a copy. Sure. How about okay. taking a bunch of them? Yes. Okay. And passing them around. I'm having Thanks so much. Thanks. And how about down that way, too? Thank you. Yeah. Yep, thank you. <coughs> I assume you have to be voting the age of silence. Yes. Mm, probably. <laughs> I think so. But Jeff, Jeff, the voice from behind you. Is Jeff Is oh, here to vote? Oh. Can you hear me stand up? All righty. Oh. Close oh. enough. Leanne lives in Hardwick. So, Leanne. Oh, do you live in Hardwick? No, I'm Greensboro. Leanne doesn't. Le Leanne? Leanne? No, she doesn't. Ah! Who lives in Hardwick anymore? I do. <laughs> no one really lives in Hardwick. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Oh, yeah. Any amendments to tonight's agenda? I have a question. It says on here at the bottom that the next meeting is January 21, mm. and I think the last meeting we were told that there would be one on the 14th. 14th, yes. First is uh, let's see if it's scheduled. Three Monday nights in a row. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> You're so excited. <laughs> I am. We do have a special budget meeting scheduled for the 14th. Right. But we didn't feel it was needed. Six o'clock. But we didn't feel it was needed. That's why we put this one tonight, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, we're talking. <laughs> Do we have a regular? Should we got a regular one on the 21st. Supposed to. Martin Luther King Day. Are we going to have school? No, we don't. Uh, we don't have school on the 21st. Right, the 21st. Okay, so uh, 14th is off. Let's okay. do the 14th. Off. Then. Do the 21st. 14th is off. Because Can we do that? Yeah. In case we need it. In case we need it, but I think no, last time we decided we don't need it. How about if we did the 14th, and that way if we needed the 21st, we could still have it, but we wouldn't so need it. The 21st is a regular <laughs> meeting in the calendar. calendar. <laughs> Yeah, that's a regular meeting. I think I think we get a chance to approve the budget then. <laughs> so Martin Luther King Day. Oh, it is. Could yeah, we have a we little have respect? <laughs> yeah, <we do. laughs> Come on, people. I have a funny feeling Dr. King would want us to approve the budget for two <laughs> even on his birthday. But I'm just guessing. I don't think so. I think somebody doesn't want to be here. It's technically the 15th. It's technically the 15th. No, it's not the 15th. All right. So in the uh, past months, and even, you know, even in the last year, I sense that the board has been edging more and more to uh, looking at building budget items uh, like this, that there's, a, there's an impression that there's a patchwork of uh, fixes being applied to the school, and on the other uh, side of the equation, uh, there's what are the long-term plans of the school, and, and really for the school building, and they should really ideally meld together so that the patchwork work that we do doesn't have to be undone and torn out and, and recreated for the future. So this operation has been going in this building for 48 years, and I've, I, my impression is the board uh, is ready to start uh, thinking about what, what the building needs for uh, the next decades that come around. Um, we've got uh, building reports from Jeff uh, now for quite a while. They uh, outline pretty specifically what kind of changes are uh, suggested and needed and the approximate uh, cost of those. They range uh, everywhere from a new uh, heating and ventilation air conditioning system. Uh, the air conditioning thing hasn't been working for 30 years? 30 years. Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost 30. The places, the limited places that had it. Okay. Which, yeah. Where the auditorium and the office complex. The probably hasn't worked now. in 28. I think that's... Those are the only yeah. places, weren't they? Those did are the you, two places. Did you jump on the agenda? 
Yeah, yeah we didn't probably we didn't, we didn't before we even got to the approving of the minutes. Oh, right. Okay. Well, you get so excited about what's going on. About the detail. I was just making sure I wasn't sleeping there for that. No, I was sleeping there for that. Does okay. somebody... Well, there is that agenda item of uh, approving minutes of the December 17, 2018 so meeting. Moved. I would like to say that these are beautiful minutes, Steve. Duh. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Thank you. They're, they're always hideously late, and I'm constantly reminded <laughs> of that. Uh, is there any further discussion on the minutes from December... The 17th, 2018. Hearing no further comments, let's go to the vote. All those in favor of accepting the minutes as presented, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, abstain. Passed unanimously. And now, following the uh, menu, the next item is public comment. Is there any public comment at this point? I just wondered if before the public comment we might have an official welcome and acknowledgement of our newest member who everyone might not know. That would be hugely appropriate. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sorry to be I'd running like to thank on the your board <laughs> for running the meeting. <laughs> so may I introduce to you McNeil. How do you do? Welcome. The uh, uh, representative from uh, on the board from uh, Greensboro. Thank you, David. Well done, Steve. Should we do a quick <laughs> go around, Steve, so McNeil knows who everyone else is? Do you know anyone on this board? Amy, Mike, Todd. Do you know Katie, David Perigo, the Andy, just principal? met David. We've met. We've met. Do you know Audrey Grant? How do you do? And Amy Holloway? Yes. Amy, yeah. Yeah. This is our other <laughs> student rep. Hi, I'm Elijah. Know you as well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's right. I've always been about. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few hundred people that say that to me, by the way. <laughs> do you know? Do you know Jeff uh, Lacour's at the end of the table? Yeah. Hello. And I don't know if you said you know Kaylee or not. Yeah. Kaylee. Also a. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So you know. People here more than maybe you should. That's <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Now, ideas for the future of Hayes and Union. Public School. comment. Not just yet. <laughs> Public comment. Does somebody want to take over running the meeting for me? Right here in black and white. He's the magic chair. Do you want to start again? Yeah. I, you know, I just couldn't make head or tails out of it. <laughs> Is there public comment tonight? But not about his meetings. I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Katie Watts. I'm the program director for Head Start. So thank you for having us. Um, we're just here to hopefully engage in some conversation about what a collaboration could look like. Um, I'm interested to hear if there's any space um, within your facility um, to do perhaps um, a blended early childhood um, center with your pre-K program. So that's what we're here for. Um, I recently applied for a grant that we're going to be hearing um, from very soon. Um, the funds will be released March 1st, and it's a pretty significant renovation fund of up to $249,000. Um, that's what, I guess, the federal government calls a minor renovation. So um, we're interested to see if there's any potential of either building in addition or renovating a space here and doing some type of collaboration. I think we're, we're keenly interested in that possibility. All right, and uh, maybe uh, you'll have something to say as, as the meeting progresses. Yeah, I don't have to talk now because she's the boss. <laughs> right. I don't go by that. Good decision. All right. So, uh, as I was saying a couple of minutes ago, uh, I, I'm sensing that the board is is now being more aware of uh, uh, building issues uh, in terms of thinking about kind of patchwork uh, fixes to the building in, uh, compared to long-term needs. Uh, this building's been here for 48 years, uh, according uh, to Jeff, if I'm Correct. It has weathered rather well for a 48-year-old, um, but now we need to look at the uh, with 
uh, maintenance going along, but now we're really going to need to look uh, forward. And um, one of the, the the reasons for that is uh, the education experience in this school is now getting a little more evolved and developed. Uh, the learning experience is not only in the classroom, but it's outside uh, in the community. And it, it seems that in terms of a long-term plan for the building, there may be room to think about the reverse process, is how the community can uh, use this uh, building and at the same time benefit uh, the students. Uh, that would be a, a long-range consideration and would be helpful to uh, as kind of a, give us a compass on, on where to steer. I'll give you an example. I'm going to go around the, the room uh, to ask uh, your views on that, if you've thought on that. But I thought I'd, I'd start with an example, not very well or thoroughly thought out, but uh, with respect to the, uh, the kitchen here. Um, there's some equipment in the kitchen that needs to be replaced, and it's due for a re renovation. It is absolutely due for renovation. But what would the uh, use of the kitchen in the future, what's the potential future use of the kitchen in the school with respect to the community? For example, assuming we have uh, students growing produce and producing food and maybe even uh, raising livestock, uh, what if what if the kitchen can be used uh, by some of the students as part of a nutrition uh, program uh, to make meals? And what if some of those meals can be made for uh, uh, people who can't really move out uh, of their move around a lot, and uh, perhaps the meals uh, can prepared by the students with a nutritional foundation? Uh, might be made available to those uh, uh, people in the community that need it and, you know, are just not up to cooking anymore. And uh, so that's, if that's the case, uh, then what does a kitchen like that look like and what will have to be the dimensions and what will be the kind of equipment to, uh, that might be used for that? We know, thanks to uh, Jeff, the improvements we need to keep the kitchen going as a going enterprise with, with what we have now in terms of the compressors and the walk-in coolers that need to be replaced and, and the rest of the, the stuff uh, Jeff has brought to our attention about the kitchen. So in terms of looking ahead, if we're going to make major revisions that require a bond, people are used to hearing about bonds when a school has to expand and, and create more space. Well, that's not happening. In fact, it's going the other direction. If uh, history is any guide, the student count will, will start diminishing. So uh, when people read about uh, requesting a bond, um, they'll they'll need to know why and uh, if they see that the request for the bond incorporates some plan to get the community more involved with the school and possibly use the school on a, a year-round basis even um, that may give them more information about whether they want to approve or not uh, a bond that, that we suggest and, and recommend that they use so there's just one idea of how to think in terms of uh, the future uh, needs of the school. By the way, parenthetically, I, I'm sorry I must have filled your mailbox to full and brimming because I tried to send you materials that uh, I found from December 2016 from the last architect that came in here and did some work. Uh, I tried to send a floor plan. I tried to send the architect's uh, analysis of the school and the space needs, and and then the architect's uh, suggestions about what could be uh, improved and what actually needed improvement. Uh, I sent those today. I hope they're they're in your email, and I hope those three items are in there at least. One should be a floor plan of the school. 
which is helpful if you want to take a crayon and start thinking about moving offices and places around. And the other two are the analysis from the uh, architect about space needs, what needs more space, what needs to be replaced, things that uh, Jeff has been reminding us for the past uh, couple of years. So uh, tonight, I think, is, is the start, is the start of uh, what is, my sense is going to be, you know, the board's leading the effort to meet the board's concern about plotting out the direction for the next couple of decades for the, the physical plant of the building. Uh, um, and I just illustrated one possible approach to think about the future is how the community can be more integrated into this building. Even as student numbers shrink, the education is being, uh, uh, educational experience is more and more out, outside of the classroom, but the classroom, it's in addition to classroom training. Traditional classroom uh, education uh, still appears to be a core part of uh, uh, the process of uh, educating kids. So with that aside, uh, I'll, I'll ask, go around now and ask uh, if anyone has any thoughts on that. And um, I'll be making notes and open agenda. Say anything you want. This is, this is where we start gathering ideas. And I'll ask uh, Audrey uh, Grant first uh, if she's got, uh, or do you want to? You want me to ask Amy first? Please ask Amy first. All right. <laughs> Amy, do you have any ideas about the uh, future of the school in, in terms of uh, the physical plant and, and how to prepare for future uses of the school? Um, I don't have specifics, but what I heard you saying was that, um, that maybe, and maybe I'm adding on to this, maybe there needs to be some clear values upon which we are making that decision. So it's value-based decision-making of saying anything that's done to the school has to keep into consideration um, potential use by community um, so that, the, that we're repurposing the space. So what I heard is that there's pure renovation of existing space for expanded use. So that would be like taking the kitchen and, you know, we really renovating it so that it's it's usable. Um, doing the renovations around things like heating and the things that are going to keep it standing and functioning well. Repurposing existing space, and we talked about that the last time, about the possibility of moving the arts department down to the to the gym area and really creating a, an arts. And that would also include, you know, collaborations like Head Start, taking space that's already here and repurposing it for that same sort of expanded use, and then adding, right, new building, which would be a gym on the property, but not necessarily in the building, that would also be available for community use to your, you know, to your, your point. So, so I'm sort of hearing, I don't, I'm not hearing Emilia saying, let's just raise this building and build a new building, but that can we be creative in taking existing space and repurposing it and using that language? And I can't think of it, it's not renovation, but some term that incorporates that vision for making it accessible to community use on beyond just the school use, but also responding to where, where are the strengths of the schools are and beyond the academics um, are the arts and also um, our athletic program. So, um, that's what I heard you saying, and that's actually what I've been sort of thinking about as well. I hadn't really thought about the kitchen, but that's really quite brilliant. So how do, you know, how do we use, you know, the resources we have in the Center for Ag Economy, who knows that kind of stuff, to build those kinds of programs? And if we're going to build programs around cooking arts, do we also build a program around early education using Head Start, you know, and having them here as well? So I don't know if that answers your question, but that's what I was thinking. Mr. McNeil or McNeil. Um, might be possibly somewhat arcane, but it sounds like the repurposing <coughs> is headed towards an increase in social services or providing social services. So that sounds like where this discussion is leading or has been in the past. In light of that, it's interesting that um, 
Tim Ash, President Pro Tem of the Senate, has just let it be known that one of his interests is now looking at or uh, examining funding taxes, the tax structure in such a way that we can begin to understand how the increasing burden of social services on schools is affecting local property taxes. <clears throat> and if you were contemplating issuing a bond to do anything with the school, um, it could become a little bit sticky just in terms of then you are contemplating asking property tax to start funding some of these repurposed social services and moving away from a strictly um, educational um, purpose for property taxes. So that, in light of that, you know, it, it sort of could complicate the discussion in terms of what you know the money was being raised for. It, that's certainly an added dimension. And that there is some some experience out there for that. I forget who. Well, there is a community wellness uh, discussion ongoing uh, with various social service agencies. Uh, we straddle three of them: Lamoille, Orleans, and uh, Washington. And there are a parallel set of discussion and Caledonia, <laughs> which is where we are. Yeah. Um, Glad to be advised on how to run the meeting and where we are. <laughs> Those are essential parts of running a good meeting. <laughs> so some schools, some schools have have actually put in on the premises uh, uh, a dentist chair and, and a place where uh, there could be those kinds of uh, visits uh, that uh, some students may not have the uh, benefit of uh, uh, easy access or regular access uh, to that, so yes. I think that's one of the recognitions of what's driving the cost of schools, mm -hmm. is the increasing use of schools as you know, dispensing social services. Mm -hmm. And then a fundamental discussion of then, <clears throat> if schools are gonna do that, then you need to look at the funding mechanism so that you are not burdening local property tax with those delivering it social services, which should probably be right, something that the state would fund. So I mean, any discussion of what you do with this building, and if you're going to increase the social service aspect of it, should probably take into account some of, you know, I mean, this is sort of coming up, so mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily impact on this discussion now, but it's, I think it's something to be mindful of. Thank you. Community members. Comment? Um. Oh, I was I was taking it more of it was would be more of a community centered place for the community as opposed to social services. And years ago when we were on the patch committee, we had actually talked about utilizing the schools that the taxpayers pay for anyway and maintain uh, more than throughout just the school day, but to provide uh, classes for adults, to provide meeting places, to provide exercise place, to provide uh, wellness activities, and, you know, places for children to meet, parents to meet, adults to meet, etc., more as a community center than a social service aspect. Right. Uh, if you've read uh, Jeff Jeff's uh, notes on that, he, he did uh, illustrate in the building history some uh, renovations that were made uh, to for that very purpose, uh, so yeah, that's part of this. I mean, and that was a goal of Patch actually when we were when we had Patch. Right. <laughs> Thank you. We'll turn to Michael. Sure. Uh, yeah, I I like the ideas. I think for one about the kitchen, for instance. I think for one thing, what we really need to do is. And clearly, this is a brainstorming session. We need to break it down into areas, look for this. But there are several, there are funding stream issues that McNeil brought up. We have a history of this. Forty years ago, we had one of the best business programs in the state here at Hazen Union. 
uh, students were winning uh, some of the statewide competitions and our archaic uh, skills now. Uh, typing? Typing <laughs> and uh, steno, <laughs> etc. So, but we lost that because the state funding uh, said, no, that goes to the tech ed centers and so we will no longer, we were not, we are not going to replace your typewriters, um, turn them into computers. Uh, this is before that. And that all went to Lemoyne Union, GMTCC, which is now GMTCC. But I think it's also exciting that that discussion can help make this much more community center that several have alluded to. Um, I think we need to remember that we have not just this building, but we have 100 acres here, no. uh, 18 acres of which is athletic fields and this building, and the other 82 of which is wooded, uh, with a, a, another three buildings on it. But those are resources that can are used currently for uh, trails as well as for these other buildings and potentially for additional community uses of different kinds. Um, I think we also need to remember what off-site facilities there are. And this is, uh, we currently, and in the recent and distant past, have used the Harvard Townhouse and more recently the HCA for a variety of uh, different activities. But if, it's, if we're going to look at this as a community thing, we need to look at the various resources that are available. And somehow getting a list of the main topics, some of which are very, they're hardware oriented, they're the heating system, the um, et cetera, but some of which are programmatic, and a list of ideas and distribute that and have people come up with additional ideas to put on there, possibly task forces, but we need to have a pretty good handle on this if and a timeline before we get too far into it so this isn't just something where we're rubbing our heads and uh, getting excited but have no idea where it's going. Todd. Our chair opened up the building's 48 plus years old. We've got a lot of infrastructure issues that's got to be dealt with. I like the idea that was presented at the last meeting of possibly a gym complex moving the auditorium. My only question to that is, after I was thinking about it, is how many are in the arts? Is that justified? So we got to have legitimate numbers. I go along with the community thing as well, but we don't have a great pot of money, even if we're thinking of going to bond. Jeff's thrown some numbers out there that's pretty expensive. Um, we've got code violations we got to deal with. Um, so, I like the ideas that have been presented so far, but I'm going to probably be the the uh, stick in the mud when it comes to some of this stuff. I like what's presented here. We, I don't see why we couldn't find space for them here. I, they've, they're coming. They've, they've got a pocketbook. Taxpayers are going to like that. Granted, it's a grant, but I'd like to hear. A five-year, ten-year plan of expenses and stuff like that. The whole idea of after-school thing, there's an expense to that. Taxpayers are paying to educate the students and maintain the building to educate the students. The after-school programs and stuff like that are all great ideas. We just got to figure out a revenue stream for it so the taxpayers aren't being burdened with that as well. Um, I like the ideas, but I, I'm probably going to be more on the structure because I've been around with Jeff and seen some of the stuff that's going on here. And I'd like to make sure we got heat in the building and not 80-year-old techs coming in here to keep it maintained. Hey, careful. <laughs> All right. Are you 80? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Closer to it than you are. So you're, you're, uh, you're reminding us that uh, with all these future plans, there, there are still some potential uh, building violations or, or stuff that needs to be We've addressed. We've got infrastructure right to now. deal with. Infrastructure to deal with. We've got space. 
we can, if mm. we have to, I expand in the kitchen. Mike mentioned one of the kitchen discussion. Mm. Home ec room isn't very far away from the kitchen. Can we expand and make that one big, so there's a community area. Those are thoughts. It's an unutilized space. Okay. So, underutilized space. Thank you for that. So see, see your age down there. Okay. <laughs> it's utilized for other things. Right. Now. But it could be utilized for that. Right. Because it was that. Yeah. Um, so, there's a lot of. I'd like to see us bring it back in a little bit. And then, you know, I like the idea of listing, prioritizing, and stuff like that. We could be at this discussion for a year and a half. I don't think we can afford to do that. Right. We can't on the infrastructure. No, yeah. absolutely. And we can't multi-bond. I'd like to go with one. I'd, I'd like to see a sinking fund or a, so that what we put in so that we don't have to every time some good idea comes along that we have to bond or we have to yeah. uh, add it to the budget so that we have a way of, mm -hmm. okay. of evening out the, uh, I buy the taxes. I buy that. Can I just ask sort of a, a logistical question? Because um, we're talking about a potential federal grant to do renovations of space that's dedicated to the Head Start program, which I think we can make an educational case. We've got a lot of mm -hmm. students here interested in early education. We've got a lot of students who we want to understand what it's like to take care of small children like I mean I think we can argue that but if there is there a way to combine a bond and other funding streams so that your issues around the social service so is there like a foundation like a Robert Wood Johnson that's interested in community health are they a potential funding stream for something like a community center slash gym that it's um, it's it's layered so that part of that is a bond, but the other part is other funding, like how the library's done it. I don't know why I'm pointing to you because of your mom, I guess. Because of the library's done it is you know having both, you know, bond issue, but also other sources of revenue. That's so it's not totally the taxpayer that's taking the burden. And we're showing some fiscal responsibility by right, doing that. that. We're identifying mm -hmm. that. You know, because we can come in under those other, you know, parameters for, for funding um, large building projects that are dedicated towards either the arts and or um, health. I guess so, that adds a layer of complexity to what Mike said about you really have to understand your mission moving forward. And then exactly. if, if you have that comprehensive vision, then you find, you know, whether it's there are other sources of funding and then how you, I don't, you know, it seems logistically you could do it, but you just have to understand what sources of funding you are looking for for a while. Right. Well, I guess that's question two is if those places would fund it being in a school because a school is considered a municipal, whatever. I guess there's, I, I think we could be creative, but I think we also then have to go back and find out legally, can we bundle those sources of revenue in a way mm -hmm. that says to the taxpayers, we recognize we are changing the nature of the school, this is our vision of the school, and we're going to sources that would fund it um, for the building and renovation. Ongoing programs is another issue, cool. right? The, you guys are going to, the money goes to renovation. The funding part for the ongoing program is it's still your responsibility, correct? Yeah. So I'm not sure if this is a good time to jump in just talking about funding. Um, that's been my role for the last 12 months, just trying to make the most of it is grant money. Um, but you also have to remember that you're a pre-qualified program, too. Taxpayers are paying the tuition for Act 166. So if we come in and we combine programs, then we no longer have to do that. So they're saving over 3000 per child um, from Hardwick. So that right there is huge. Right now, we are um, in the Orleans Supervisory Union. I'm not sure if you're aware about the COFEC building and over in Albany. We have a beautiful collaboration where, you know, we provide one teacher and the public school provides the other teacher, and it is a blended classroom. Um, we pay rent there, so it's not, you know, we expect that the school takes over, um, and so there's also positions that we fund as well, so it's taking off that financial burden. Um, I would rather see us put money into a school rather than be on our own and dumping money into um, a private rental. 
we're not in the business to own buildings anymore, and I, I hear you with, with all these old buildings. Um, NECA itself, we're trying to unload some of our buildings, mm -hmm. um, and Hardwick is, is one that we just need to get out of for the cost of repairs. But with with this um, minor renovation money, it can go towards you know large expenses like replacing the heating and so forth. The only thing they want to see is a long-term lease, so 35 years or more, and we're good to go. So. As long as the walls don't fall down. <laughs> well, that's a, but the, bringing up that issue, that's just for Hardwick students. This is a union. Mm -hmm. We serve Wolcott, we serve Greensboro. Right, serve the whole okay. school But they also got their own Head Start programs, too, as well. Mm -hmm. No? Nope. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's, Thank um, you. I just yeah, wanted no to, just then, to be, gotta be careful. This is a union school yeah. serving the union area when you're communicating. Yeah. And okay. so, Todd, in the past, uh, we've had, we've had, last year we had three children from Wolcott. That is not our catchment area. However, they did not have room for them. We asked them permission, can we pick up these kids? They say yay or nay. Mm -hmm. So we right. served them. The parents had to yeah. transport them, but we, we could serve them from other counties also. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, as far as a communication issue, this is a union building. Yeah, got it. Okay, that's that's all I want. Mm -hmm. uh, you clarified it. Thank you. Uh, let's continue around the table and uh, hear, hear the views of the principal. Um, so a few ideas. Um, first, I don't want to necessarily assume that the future means dwindling student population. Um, I think right now we are providing a a high school experience which is commensurate with the surrounding communities and not necessarily providing any incentive for someone from surrounding communities to want to come here. But I think if we could imagine creating something really exciting and really unique and really distinct which students could be attracted to that we could potentially think about um, the population rising. So that's my first point. I don't want us to necessarily think that we are necessarily on a dwindling track no matter what we do. Um, so the second thing I want to say is I think it would behoove us to be pretty clear and pretty focused on the vision of what <coughs> education is going to look like in this building um, and think about uh, form fitting <coughs> meaning that it would be silly to sink a lot of money into something unless there was a pretty strong vision behind what type of education that was representing. So I think of uh, also a number of things. The state uh, of Vermont right now has given us a lot of cues about ideas about where education might potentially be going. And, and one powerful and fundamental idea is that one size does not fit all. And we have a history of 130 years of education in this country that is based on the opposite idea, that one size really does fit all, and that we've developed a curriculum which is a kind of disembodied experience, which is a set exploration of a, a body of information for the most part um, that is then sort of dispensed to humans. Um, we know now from you know, the last 30 years of research about teaching and learning and how the brain works, that that doesn't really constitute an education if what we mean by education is the transformation of human beings. I think each one of us, um, certainly the adult members of the board, can think back to our own educations who um, I think most of us experience this type of education. And I, and I can tell you that what I remember and what I, have, what I took from my years in high school um, was mostly sort of the sub-curriculum. Like I learned a lot of things about life that had nothing to do with what the adults who d had designed that experience intended for me to learn. Right? So... I'm imagining us creating some kind of place that takes the lead from the state and says, you're right, 
We've known this for a long time. One size doesn't fit all. Thank you so much for the permission you've given us and the mandate, in a way, to move in a different direction. Secondly, multiple pathways. Not, not every student needs to pursue the same pathway, right? So they're, they're really pushing these multiple experiences. So an idea which excites me and has excited me for a very long time um, and grew out of my experiences knowing educators who work in tech centers. I have a really good friend who left working in a comprehensive American high school and went and worked in a tech center. And he said to me, he said, you know how much of a pleasure it is to work in a place where kids come to school every day because they want to, because they're motivated to learn and they're excited about what's going on? Mm -hmm. It's a world of difference. Mm -hmm. And so I began thinking, well, why should only tech center kids have that experience? Why can't all kids have that experience? Wouldn't it make a lot more sense to try and educate our young people by attracting to something that they're passionate about and interested about? So if you start with that premise, then you can start to go to a whole bunch of things that we know really engage kids. And so I think, like one example, this community has a huge interest in the arts. Um, when we go and we see the chorus perform or we see some of these artistic um, representations that the students do, the students are very <coughs> engaged and very attracted to that. Um, I know from my own personal experience in school, my involvement in the arts was what kept me going. It kept me focused as an individual, it pushed me, it stretched me, and I would argue that I earned, learned more value of value through that experience than I did in all those courses that they told me I needed to take. Right? So I'm beginning to wonder, like, what would it be like if we imagined a series of experiences for kids that kids could spend a large portion of their day immersing in a passion, an area of passion. So maybe it would be the arts. Maybe it would be child development. Um, maybe it would be social justice. Um, at the beginning of the year, we started a workshop with the faculty here, and we um, asked people to brainstorm different ideas that they thought students might be gravitate towards in terms of being passionate and interested in. And they came up with a bunch of ideas and sort of went off in little groups and started to brainstorm those things. Um, but I'm thinking that we need to, if we want to develop something that's consistent with the ideals that have been posited by the state, which I think are fundamentally good and sound ideas, and if we want to continue to move towards an education that's authentically engaging for our kids, we need to think outside the box a little bit more. Um, because even though all of that exists, and we talk a lot about our learning experience moving outside of the classroom and into the community, mostly what we have going on is still a fairly traditional looking education. Um, so. I'm going to argue that this conversation should start to dream a little bit um, and think wildly about what education might look like for kids here. And I will leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, uh, your thoughts? You have particular insight into the physical structure of the um, <clears throat> You know, when you were talking about the, the ideas for the kitchen, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily have those ideas for our regular commercial kitchen that the food service uses because there's a number of different issues involved in that. But that's a perfect, um, that's really in line with what I've had in mind for our home ec space. Um, you know, the home ec space was a 1960s designed kitchen and it just, just like anybody's kitchen at home from that era, it, it needs a retrofit. But, um, you know, that's something that could be done, you know, probably right through our regular budgeted funds. And um, I, th I think it's just having somebody come up with a, 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 a nice idea. Um, and, uh, you know, you see the kitchens on TV now on all these food shows. And, you know, there's a lot of wire racks and not so much cupboards. And, um, we did get rid of the orange countertop a few years back, but... Um, talking about community use, I think that this, this school's always had um, really encouraged all the community use that we can 
of the building. Um, and I think we've tried to make that happen. One thing that's kind of changing, and I've been probably a little slow to respond to, um, they, they've um, had me attend a number of seminars at our insurance carrier, Visbit. And uh, one thing we do need to start being a little careful of is if we're having community members come in, is it, a, is it a private event or is it a school sanctioned event, just from an insurance perspective? So I think as we have this conversation, we just want to be a little careful not to overpromise the community. Um, for instance, I could see the, uh, having a conversation if we were to, to uh, increase the size of our weight room over there. We, we want to be a little careful what we promise as far as um, the, the community use of that. Not that it couldn't happen, but there are processes now that we need to start um, following closer, like getting insurance certificates from people who want to use the building. Um, Head Start, I'm sure, has a sort of insurance policy, so there's probably no, no problem with a group like that. Um, I, I think that if, I don't think there's a big pool of, kit, of students to attract out there in, in the Northeast Kingdom, in, in our area, but I, I think there's a pool of 40 or 50 kids, potentially, that the school could attract. And I think if we had, uh, a, you know, a fancy, kitchen for student use and you know maybe a renovated library and, and weight room and um, you know auditorium I think if we had some of those fancy pretty things that we could attract students and that could go a long way towards paying for some of this these things um, we, we kind of took that approach when we renovated the cafeteria ourselves and students who come in from other schools um, you know comment positive about about that renovation. So um, I think there, it does take a little thinking outside of the box. Um, as far as the expense of the heat and vent renovations, um, I, I've got a little different way of thinking about that in that 25 years ago, um, we made a relatively modest um, investment of about $600,000. It would take me quite a while to do it and really figure about what we've saved, but I think that we have probably saved in millions of dollars. Are you referring to the wood chip? Yeah, when we wood when we converted from electric heat to wood chips. Um, so, you know, to some extent, I think we're proposing spending some money that we've already saved over the years. Um, and, you know, I, I think that there's some more savings to be realized. Um, there's certainly... I improvements in comfort that could come from from an HVAC renovation. Um, so that's probably kind of my thoughts for now in addition to what you've already seen from me. But. Thank you, uh, Jeff. Elijah, uh, do you have something uh, that you want to offer us or do you want to talk after we hit up Audrey again? <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, looking at the ideas on the table, uh, the idea of a new school, I think, sort of stemmed from the idea that the renovations might be more expensive than they're worth. Um, and to kind of um, to evaluate which one of those would be a better option, I think that we should get cost estimates and how long it would take for the new school to pay off given current rates of renovation. Um, also, with the idea of the new school, it was proposed that um, we're decreasing in student size, so the new school needs to be smaller. Um, yes, we have decreased in student size. It would be good to see um, uh, hard demographic trends to see that we're going to continue decreasing in student size, or that the state or that the space is too big, um, because it's nice to have a lot of space. And if we're going to make a sc new school. Um, it would, it wouldn't be a good thing to um, decrease the amount of space in it. Um, and then it was also uh, proposed that we, in addition to the school, um, as well as do all the other renovations. Um, and uh, I agree with Mr. Perigo that um, whatever additions we do or whatever direction we take should be driven first by our. Um, our aspirations, um, and so I think that's really important to consider first, and also 
fiscally, um, I think uh, looking at how much the renovation is going to cost, how much it's going to cost compared to uh, what a renovation or building new school would be like. Thank you. Well spoken. Kaylee, thoughts? Um, I have a couple of questions to start with, if that's all right with everyone. Um, I have a question for Head Start first, but do you, is there a, um, in the grant or in the project plan, um, a sort of dream for how much space you're looking for? You know, we originally approached it um, just by renovating the current space. We've met with the Masons, and they're on board with allowing us to build an, an addition. Yeah. Um, but right now it looks as if maybe a 15 square under foot space addition um, is what we could afford within that budget. Yeah. Um, so we're definitely interested to hear if there's space within the school that's already existing where we're not having to dump, you know, all the money on silly things like investing in um, a sprinkler system. Right. But so roughly 1,500 square feet, is that enough to, or, or if... If for whatever reason the budget became less, if you weren't building an addition but were maybe revamping a space, yeah. sort of, I guess the question is what's the ideal amount of room? Would it be 1,500 or would it be more if, if the budget allowed for more? If the budget allowed for more, we would love more space. Yeah, um, okay. So what we do is we actually follow um, child care licensing regulations. Yeah. So it's 35 square feet per child. Um, typically we have a classroom size about 16. Right now, if you're looking at the COFEC model with that collaboration, there's um, two classrooms and there's 20 each. Okay. And you would have two teachers in each classroom. And that would be more like 2,000 square feet, right? For Yeah, you, okay. would, you would say it's between maybe nine, or oh, between 800 and 1,000 square feet for classroom size. Okay. But you're great. now not having to build a kitchen and other type of necessary. Yep. Features. Yep. And that would just be classroom space. Yeah. Right. That's not office. Just That's not offices. Just for yep. Thank you, that really helps. Um, so um, I guess my other question too, um, it's been, this is a great model, so it's been great to hear everybody's different perspective. Um, one of the things that I would be curious about, um, I mainly just have questions for this project. Um, questions like that, questions about what kinds of learning environments currently don't work and why they don't work. Why do they not work for teachers or why do they not work for students? Um, what is it about the space that um, needs to change? I think we all agree that more natural light would make it a better learning environment. How do we do that? Is that as simple as adding skylights? Would that then make it less of a cost to redo the roof if we had less square footage because we had more skylights? Things like that. Um, if we're, if we're looking at our current plan and how to kind of maximize that space, um, I think a lot about flexibility and how um, if we're looking towards a vision of, of how we make education the best we can right now, but also in the future, I always think of flexibility because we can't necessarily predict what the future is going to be. Ideally, it's wonderful and there are lots of students and, um, and we are also still a community school and looking at work-based work learning. But how can we say, rather than saying, okay, this is going to be a math room and it's always going to be a math room, how can we say, okay, we have this hallway that has 4,000 square feet, let's make it as as open as possible, so that way you could have integration between classrooms, you could have, um, maybe it's as simple as kind of adding the divider that's here in these humanity rooms, um, but then actually using that for cre in creative ways. Um, I also on a basic level think, think about budget too, think about how we, um, uh, how, how we can expedite spending money to make the physical part of the school the best we can, but also how do we then not spend everything we have so that we can't afford to make it the, the school, um, we can't be providing the teachers and the admin and the staff with the, with the other money that they need. Um, I think there are simple things that if we had the resources um, would make a really big difference, like having a food a farm program. Um, I love Jeffrey Canada at the Harlem Renaissance School uh, brings fresh flowers every day, like very, very simple things that I think add immense qualities to a school. Um, but my biggest thing is, is how can we first ask those questions to the major stakeholders we have, which are the students and the people who work in the building, um, and then figure out um, 
if we have other stakeholders like Head Start and what the space they need, how do we fit that in? Can we fit it into what we have? If not, then maybe we think about adding onto the building. Um, and then, um, but even before all of that, the values. So do we want it to be a flexible school that's open? Do we want it to be a work-based learning? Do we want it to be <coughs> focused on community? How do, we, how do we have that be the entire school? Do we have certain areas of the school? And um, I don't know if that's necessarily something that the school board figures out, um, but I think we could, you know, I think we could say that um, our main value is to make sure that we're providing a space that students are learning um, to the best of their ability. And so that's what I'm really interested in. Um, and there are all kinds of other little things too, but that's what I got. I have it written down too, Steve, so if you want me to just copy oh. my paper. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, uh, can we hear your views? Yep. Uh, first, I think it's great, Steve, that you gave this opportunity just to get ideas out um, to start the conversation because it's a lot um, uh, that can be considered here. It seems like what I, when I think of there's certain infrastructure needs that um, will always be there. And uh, it feels like if we can, if you focus on the educational experience during school hours, after school hours, inside the building, outside the building, and keep focusing these things back on what that educational experience um, you know, can and increase the experience for those those kids and the teachers because the teachers have to feel like they're in a good environment to be able to perform and, and deliver those um, those high end needs um, to the students. Um, but it it feels like um, some of these things might not take a lot of resources and infrastructure to base it on a, an experience that a kid might do um, uh, or adjust for this. For it doesn't may, it might not have to be a a large line item. There could be a lot of little things that could go on um, in that. And then also would, would be the partners. I think a big key that um, Amy you brought up is who are our partners outside the school um, that could benefit by coming together and treating this property of 100 acres with several buildings as a learning campus of sorts. And again, inside and outside the building. But I think what what, what is most exciting for me is that we, we have a, a leader of the school that's demonstrating these these ideas and wants to engage in that and I I would I would um, I think it's great that you're, you're you're engaging the way you are and have these ideas and I would be I'm glad to keep listening and supporting and taking your lead um, from being in this building uh, to sort of help move it forward but it's it's quite a task mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have enough time to think about it? <laughs> I, think, I think so. It better be brilliant. Audience. Oh, no. no. Um, it's perfectly okay to just think out loud. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, really. Yeah, what do you think we're doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Touche. Um, I agree that we need to think reasonably, but also there is no... In for a lot of students, there's no incentive to come to Hazen versus any other school in a lot of ways. Um, me personally, I think there's a reason to come here, but some students might not see that. Um, I think that one of the ways to help that is to make, and this is like very big, big picture, um, make departments feel like they're needed and wanted more. Um, you know, even just last week saying, you know, music department, drama club, here's some more money to keep doing what you're doing and help support you guys. That meant a lot to a lot of people um, and will continue to mean a lot um, in, the next, in the next year. So um, allowing for more support in programs currently and um, definitely looking at smaller things we can do to slowly build it up for sure. Um, like supporting the music department specifically, like uh, the band did a tour two years ago and there was a jump in numbers of participating band students. Right now high school band has 11 kids, middle school band has 30. <laughs> and all of those kids, like the eighth graders are dedicated, like wanting to do this, like wanting to be part of band and like continue doing it. So just, and like supporting music department supports the kids, supports, you know, Supports a music park. It's a, it's a cycle. Um, Are you talking about the tour where where the school band went to area schools? Yeah. We, so the, the 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 tour was the high school band went to 
all the elementary schools, Woolkit, Lakeview, Woodbury, Hardwick, I think that was it. Mm. Um, and we, you know, played a couple pieces for the students, like, introduced our instruments, like, got to, like, um, talk to the kids. Lakeview gave us cookies, which was wonderful. Um, and, like, get... No, no, it was, our, it was our last uh, school, so it was our <laughs> um, But just, like, you know, having that as a level of community engagement, especially with kids, like, getting them interested in it at a younger age, like, showed that there was a boost in the music department numbers. Um, and, in fact, the band and chorus are planning to do another tour in April, planning to do another tour in April um, to the same elementary schools because we saw this boost. We want to continue this engagement with um, younger kids to keep it going. Um, so that's one thing. Um, again, so like, but this is like all around incentives to come here. Um, another thing is, uh, like language department. I don't know. This is very specific. Uh, the German program has to be phased out because of low numbers, um, and also an overload on the teacher who's teaching it, which is, you know, unfortunate. I'm a German two student. Um, I love German, but, um, and it's sad to see it go. Um, so I, I, this is like a way big thing, but like, I don't know, getting another language teacher, even if like it's just like very basic kind of languages, that would be really cool to have more language, um, especially because, you know, you, a lot of colleges require it, and if you only have two options that are very basic and very specific, it'd be cool to have some weird ones out there. Um, I don't know, I like that idea. Like, um, I have a friend who goes to South Burlington that's like learning Jap uh, Japanese. Like, I wanna learn Japanese, that's cool. So I like that idea. Um, and um, there's a lot of discussion about having a lot of space. Um, I personally don't, like there is a lot of space for classrooms. There's not a lot of space for storage. So I think that whatever plan we have needs to take into consideration like all the band stuff. Like the entire band classroom is just a storage space because we have so much stuff. The uniforms, guitars, uh, keyboards, sound equipment, and that is also a classroom. Um, and the auditorium is also mostly just a lot of storage space. The entire percussion is just sitting out there constantly. Um, so I think that as we move forward, we need to think logically about storage in a grander scheme of the universe. <laughs> so that's what I have. <laughs> yeah, okay. kind of on that, Audrey. I feel yes, like please. Um, there's a, it's really good to think big and to want that big too, action. Yeah. But a lot of the times, our specific departments could just use a little bit of help. Like, yeah. it's good to want hands-on learning and stuff, but that would be nice to have a full-time shop teacher. Or we want to promote more languages, more options. Well, we have a language teacher here who speaks 11 languages, including two Native American languages, Swahili, Japanese, Korean, and, like, Mandarin, but doesn't have the funding to teach all of them. Or the time. Yeah, like, or the time. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's teaching uh, French 1 through 4, mm -hmm. and German 1 through 1 and 2, and a, a gym class. And, yeah, uh, one, one, no. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but, like, and she's amazing. She's one of my she favorite teachers. Is. And to see her so stressed about this, and, like, she wants to teach German, but she, it, and mm -hmm. she's sad about it leaving as well. Um, like that would be like I don't just giving that a, a broader horizon that would help the language department and relieve a lot a lot of stress off the teacher. Um, and yeah, like general. getting things to attract students here, we have her as a great resource. So mm -hmm. even if we get a part time teacher to teach French, then she could teach more advanced and interesting languages that would draw people here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Can we add a couple things, Steve? Or we, or yes, we? yes. Um, just really Kaylee. quickly. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, was just riffing off of Andrew a little bit, I also feel like we have like one of the most amazing forestry buildings in the state that um, is also often underutilized, especially after school. Um, so thinking about a lot of us have said, like our resources that exist in the community, also the resources that exist here, um, how can we kind of... I think there's some very small things that we could do that don't mean renovating the building, but mean reaching out to some people, starting some conversation about how we kind of um, utilize that kind of infrastructure. Um, 
also dreaming big. I think a student-run cafe would be awesome. Mm. And I think there are a lot of community members who would also come to a student-run cafe that would also help potentially support something. Um, um, cafe Speranza in town, They, yeah. um, I was talking to them when they first opened, um, and they provide, you know, uh, lunches for students if we, you could do some talking with them especially around like um, just space yeah. even like they have a kitchen there utilize it mm -hmm. it feels like the movie Field of Dreams like if you build it they'll come a little, a little bit I mean sorry um, but I, I also wonder if on some level we're talking about two separate things we're talking about space and you're talking about what does the space feel like and how do people move within it, and what's available for the, and how does it reflect the way we feel about those things that you're talking about? <coughs> the language centers, the art center, the humanity centers, the, the social service centers, like that we're creating a space where those sorts of educational, which is a different conversation, that's a budget conversation, needs to happen. I think clearly they conflate sometimes but I think we're all on the same page thinking this school has a huge opportunity to kind of move in a direction whether it attracts obviously it, it will attract new students um, because it will be so specialized and there's be such energy um, but the question is again is we've got some like the parts of renovation that are not very sexy, right? Like when you're re renovating something, you have to do things like wiring and plumbing and stuff that doesn't look great or doesn't feel great, but you have to do it. So, and to answer your question is it would be really helpful to me to find out, like really take your list and say if we did everything in it so that, no offense, we didn't have to see you for a few years coming to us every time to ask us for something. Love to see you, but you keep coming and we keep going, thank you. So if we could get that, like, this is the, this is what it would take. If we did a bond just for renovation, as unattractive as that is, what would that take? And then have this other layer that says, and what we would really like to do, um, as long as we're asking for money, is to do some things to appeal to what you're really talking about in terms of reflecting education centers. What would the space have to, how would we reconfigure the existing space to make that happen? Because I think that's two different price tags um, and two different conversations. That, your conversation, I don't look to you, that's the boring but necessary. And what we're also talking about is that if money was no object, what would we want to do? Um, hmm. Money is an object, although we're not pulling any, you're not saying absolutely we're going for a bond, but it would be kind of interesting to really sit down and maybe it is a forum with students and teachers and community members to really have this conversation continue more to say, well, what would we want from our school? We've got some concrete stakeholders that we can say, yeah, this is a good example of what we could do. Um, but we are talking about ballpark. I'm not going to hold you to it. What are we talking about, Jeff? Well, I think if you if you go with the list of things that I really feel you've got to do, mm -hmm. and that would include some sort of expansion over in the gym. For the okay. weight room. For the weight room. Uh, storage over there. Um, the sprinkler system, which is another... Yeah, you know... Um, you know, and, and, you know, renovating science areas, renovating some specific spaces. I'm guessing you're in the three to four million range. Okay. Um, it can run away from there. I mean, you know, who knows? And, and part of the reason, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. well, but part, maybe. Of the, part of the reason why we wanted to have this discussion is because we're going to have to make a decision on those. Right. sooner rather than later. Right. And so the qu question really was, if we're going to be taking out three million, which we're probably going to have to at some point soon, could we make it five and do what we really want to do? Because it doesn't make sense to put an HVAC system in if we're suddenly going to then add an addition five years later. Right. Or it doesn't make sense to redo the roof if we're going to put in a hundred skylights. Like, right. So we have to think kind of, I agree with you that there's the there's that basic number, but then the vision is also really important in us making a decision about those really immediate things. Right. So if we said we do a bond for $5 million, 5.5, 5. 5. I don't know, it's 
Number six. No, the border wall. Oh, that's. Way too soon. And there it is. Um, Sorry. So, no, no, no. I was waiting for it. Now we've had it. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but so that question it. is, and that really leads to. So we've heard from two different areas that are no draws and could be very <laughs> public areas: um, the gym and music. Is there a way to create more space with anywhere within this building? If we just say we're going to keep the, the arts where they are, is there a way to create more stored space or make that a, a more usable space? My issue with it is no matter what we do with it, we still can't have more than 298 people coming yeah. to any one performance. Yeah, that's true. Right? And in, the in the auditorium, which means that we can't, if our student body, so when we have all students and all of our faculty, how many is that? Don't answer It's that. more than mm -hmm. It's more than that. So there. you can yeah. never have a school-wide <laughs> meeting or gathering or something in that no. space. It has to go to um, the gym, right? You know, one thing I want to be clear on, there's not a lot of extra unused square footage in this building. There is some spaces that... You know, I you don't know, necessarily use, utilize to their full potential. Mm -hmm. Some of that is scheduling. Mm -hmm. um, but for many years, uh, there's a couple things have gone on. Um, you know, we've had the opportunity to pick up programs. We've had the opportunity to buy things and whatever. And, and you know, the conversation is always that, you know, oh, that'll be great. We should do that. And, you know, then you get to the, to the storage question. Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, it could be uh, a program and where are they going to locate the people who are here to run that program. And, the, you know, the answer has always been, well, we'll figure that out. Mm -hmm. And I think we've gone through 50 years of piling and piling on these things coming in, and we haven't ever really figured it out right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, you know, well, there's been a trend for 30 years that we're servicing we're using larger and larger amounts of square footage to service smaller groups of kids. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of office space, a lot of people here um, working that work with one or two students at a time. Um, um, you know, I don't, we don't, have, we've, we've managed not to have them in closets yet. I mean, a lot of times in schools that happens, but we're not far from that. In 1974, there were 32 certified professionals in this building and 450 students and one half-time reading teacher. Today there are 300 students, 32 licensed professionals, it may be one or two more or fewer than that, and another 35 or 40 paraeducators, speech language uh, counselors, etc. Some of the people you're talking about. So we do have fewer students, and we have twice as many adults. Yeah. And a lot of that is in response to recognized needs that either we've recognized here or that are coming down from state or federal law. It's not something that's just invented here in Harvard. No, no, no. So if, I mean, I'm going to give Todd a heart attack. So if we built a, a, a new gym, like if we did a new athletic complex, and we freed up the space for where the art music is and moved the arts into a larger space that could be flexible and would have all the room, I assume, for what they need. That might accommodate all the, the space that you would need in the middle of the building for things like... Oh, it could. Uh, yeah. Right? I mean, it could be a useful space. Uh, and now, the, now she didn't give me a heart attack because she's going down the same rabbit hole I was. <laughs> How much was Crashberries? The gym. Their total renovation, including the gym, was around seven million dollars. See, I'm, I got a number of twenty. In my head. Twenty million. Twenty million for a gym. It bond. Oh, bond. Total. Yeah. Oh. It, really? Whew. And you're not having a heart attack with that? Well, well good it's you. been a long time that anything's been done. <laughs> Whether. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> Are you feeling faint? Okay, fine. No, no, I'm drawing a number of twenty. I think that's because I don't think I think it'll be probably closer to seven. But I had the number twenty. I wasn't sure how much Crassberries was. Yeah. But a gym complex, 
re move the auditorium, revamp the gym. Mm -hmm. So it's an better. auditorium type. Mm -hmm. And then you have space for storage. You're probably looking in the 12 to 15. It does not take long to get it does. $20 million. Dollars. That's it. And, and that's, that's, that's the somewhere. number I was... Yeah. Right. But if we're... That, yeah. I don't want to... I like the ideas that we've come up with. And probably some taxpayers will or will not. Mm -hmm. But we're tap dancing on something that's going to right. come well, in on our heads. Well, I think we've said it out loud. How much would it cost us to build a brand new school building? A heck of much, a lot more much, than that. much more. A lot more than that. Um, there has not been, there's been one school that I'm aware of built in the last, well, there's two schools in about the last 35 years that I know of. There was Linden Town School was about 30 years ago, and Rutland High School was about 25 years ago. And prior to Rutland being built, there hadn't been another new high school in 25 years before that. Now, there's been some massive renovations going on. Uh, mm -hmm. What? How, how long ago was Rutland? Well, it's probably 25 years. <coughs> okay, and the 25 years before that includes North uh, Country and uh, includes... Well, yeah, that, there was that... Place. That's right. I mean, there was that rash. The late, the late, the late 60s, 60s or early 70s. There was right. a lot of... Um, there's been some massive renovations going on in schools. I mean, um, you look at what well, Burlington just passed seventy million dollars, Seven. and that's just to get a start. Um, um, Seven million. Seventy. 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 Oh, and, oh my yeah, God. yeah. Um, Twenty is nothing. Williston. <laughs> Williston just did a twenty million dollar renovation in a twenty-five year old building. Uh, oh, I feel better about that. Um, uh, I. I don't feel we're necessarily at that at that need. Like I said, I think there's college for you know it could be ten million. I think, but the, the gym complex and the auditorium move, being able to utilize yeah. space, re, you know, there's a lot of things we can incorporate into that. Where are we going to put the gym? And I, yeah, I got a number between thirteen and fifteen. So that's what I. Oh, would so that's also a it goes place. over the parking lot. Will you, will you look at? Um, other funding sources to, you yeah. know, to that it's not just the the community aspect of a, of the gym in particular, right? Because that's what we're really talking about. If we say, look, we need we need a new gym. We need locker rooms. I mean, obviously, we can renovate yeah. the Cascom home, but even that space is not adequate for what you need in terms of the athletic program. Correct. But that that's the that's to meet the needs of what we need right now. Other things that are coming down the, you know, like yeah. the idea of the training and stuff, but to meet the needs of the students and the staff now. I think that, I think the auditorium's the most difficult one to, to solve. Yep. Um, I think you're locked in to a square footage mm -hmm. um, that, you know, I think I think Black River Design did the best they could with that space 25 years ago, um, and that 298 number is a threshold. Right. And when we go to 305 and and so on, there's a whole lot of new issues that we come in. Insurance and all that good stuff. Yeah. Comes At the, the end of the day, um, there is no way, unless you put kids in bleachers. For you to have an all-school, and that's how it, that, but that's how it was when I was here. Mm -hmm. It was in the gym. So right. the gym. Right. and the I quality of those experiences is dramatically different. Right. Yeah. Exactly. To be able to have a community meeting in an intimate space where people can actually hear each other yeah, and right. listen to their ideas right. in a, you know, more intimate environment is dramatically different from what it's like to have an assembly in the gym. We, we avoid it at all costs. Right. So I know that they come through different revenue sources, bonds and budgeting, but uh, it's like, in my personal opinion, um, we, we, we're not like running out of space in most departments. Like, um, and it feels like it would be more valuable to have uh, more and better paid teachers than it would be to have more space. Um, if you have a great teacher, the space doesn't matter that much. If you, if you have a great space, the teacher still matters a lot. 
You need to take a trip with him. <laughs> I know, no. So no, you need to, no, really. You need to take a walk with him. I did. I did a, um, like, there's an electrical audit thing. They brought students along when I was in middle school. It was pretty cool. Um, but I think there's two different discussions here. The discussion of what we need and what we want. And something like a roof renovation is something we need. Something like skylights is something we want. Um, like gym renovation, something we need. A new gym, something we want. Auditorium rep, um... Like a new auditorium is a need, though. Like it is. The auditorium is not suitable for music classroom and also performance space, as well as like you know being a public space. Like if the drama club wants to do shows there, we have to move all of the band equipment like to another classroom, completely out of the way, because there's not enough space for everything. Hence the gym used as the auditorium and mm. the new right. gym. If we had an auditorium that could host. Um, regional, state, perhaps even national or oriented music and arts events, we could attract a whole different level of attention to what we do here. Um, and the quality of the work is that good that it could attract that attention, but imagining Hazen as kind of like a hub for arts, you know, right now we have no space that we could even do that in. Um, so it's not even an option to think about in those in that way. Um, is that space? Would that space be big enough to put studio art in as well, or were you just thinking? Oh yeah. The current gymnasium, if it were reconfigured, yeah, I think it's big enough to do all kinds of things in. So it could be an art wing, and then you would free up the art space on this side, right? I don't even know where the art wings are. Right. They both move. So, towards the. I'm going to be out of here in about five minutes. Yeah. I, this is kind of where we get every, every time, and then I think in the past we've stalled. We've gotten a little further this time, I think. But, um, you really, I, I feel you're really close to the point of needing an architect. To give us advice. Oh, absolutely. Right, right, right. No, yeah, that's no doubt. That's and, no and, doubt. and John Hamilton always kind of argued that with me. He says, You don't need to pay me to figure out what you want. Well, I think we know generally what we want. Just make him, f make them, make, make them do some basic design mm -hmm. with some numbers. Yeah. Okay. Now, you'd asked me two weeks or a month ago when we were here, had John and I ever discussed the idea of moving the auditorium to the gym? We hadn't discussed that, but he had had the thought of building a new auditorium out on out front out here, right. and just changing the front entrance, which there could be a lot of advantages to doing that. Um, front, where, where? Right on the front walk. John said, this yeah. is where it's going to go. Because I don't like the lockers and everything else, the way it's set up well, down there. Well, yeah, there, 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 that exists, too. Yeah. But, there are like 500 um, and Now, I felt, yeah. and two years ago, when John came to that board meeting, I think the board at the time, and John felt like exactly. the numbers don't support building a new auditorium, and we moved away from that conversation. But They don't support them now. Maybe we're back to it. So do we need a... a to make a motion or that we do engage have a conversation with an architect to think about I well uh, b before we, we go to an architect if I was an architect I'm not an architect but I'm playing one on TV now <laughs> <laughs> the architect will have to know what's your what are your ideas so we need to give something specific for the architect to chew on we have to say to the architect all right Take the gym, build a new one out there, and here's what we want in the space that used to be occupied by the gym. And we're going to need a bunch of studio art space here. We're going to need an auditorium here. It's going to have to hold this one. I mean, it, they're going to, mm -hmm. to not waste our money, we're going to have right. to mm -hmm. give a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell us where we're dreaming and when we're not. But I just want to ask uh, Lisa Cathcart before Todd has to get out of here. You wanted to say something. I just had a couple of actual questions. Thank you for the I love what you said about past wealth. Basically, what it translates to me is kids' passions. Do you even know what your students' passions are, what they aspire to? I always ask uh, dream questions. If you had transportation, if you had all the money you needed, if you had, what would you want to do? What would you want to do that would make you happy? Because happy kid, my kid is an example of how 
Thousands and thousands of dollars can be spent on an unhappy kid who's sitting in a classroom learning about history where he doesn't give a dang about it. All he wants to do is work on cars. And if you put your money into the trades or the passion of your students, you're going to get money back. You're, you're going to save a fortune on special ed. He was in the A room. He was in Maple Hill. He got to the sex center. He graduated top of his class with honors because he was feeding his passion. He, wasn't, he didn't care about what happened in 1600 in Europe. He didn't care. And he disrupted his class 32 times in a minute on a daily basis which made it hell for the other students in the classroom, it made it hell for his teacher, and it made it hell for him. And it was all this gray hair is from getting him through school, <laughs> okay? But you got him in the tech center, and he thrived. What are your students' passions? Do you know? Have anybody surveyed the kids and said, what do you want to do? What do you want? Number one. Number two, I hope whatever renovations you all decide to do include things that will be renewable energy, which will save you money, like solar panels, like heat exchange, whatever it is. The $600,000 investment you made in the wood chips, think outside the box as far as renewable energy to run the school to save bills. There was another point. But basically, the passion of the kids, I do that. I, I process. But just, just something to think about. Do you even know what your kids' passions are? Do you know what they want? Because that will lead your future. That's a, a pretty uh, fundamental uh, uh, question, I guess, which is why this building is here. It's for the benefit of, of who the students, then our mission is to, I guess, introduce them uh, to the life, the world they're going to meet and, and their contribution to that world. Now, there was a suggestion uh, to make a motion. Um, sure, let's entertain. Can't do it tonight. Right. Uh, <laughs> how about if I? How about, how about if I if I just gather go ahead gather up this this information from this meeting and uh, distribute it and you know let's let's all think about it and come up with uh, think about it in terms of what information to give to an architect. Now I've tried sometimes not successfully to send you stuff from the December 2016. I got it. You got it. Okay, so yeah, we got it. Uh, success. There's a floor plan of the uh, school. There's uh, the arch uh, architect's analysis of the needs uh, as presently configured, speaking from uh, December 2016, and their recommendations. So the, the floor plan is, is great if you have a box of crayons to start Xing out and, and moving it and drawing. And so the things I'm going to give you, uh, the notes from this meeting that I'm going to give you, I hope I've, I've got most of your thoughts down. And if you could work on that floor plan and put your, draw your ideas in there, that's the beginning of having something uh, worthwhile to show to an architect. So, oh, I just another question. If we decide, now that I've heard 20 million, I'm, it, my heart's stopping a little bit, but it's going again. Um, W this would be for next year, would be the earliest that we could do a bond, correct? I mean, so is that it would be a goal to, to float this by next year, yeah. I, I would think you're not going to see much work here until at least the summer of 2020. Right, so what I'm yeah. thinking that we need to be thinking so that you're yeah. not always coming back to set sort of a deadline for us not to like drop dead we need to make a decision but to get closer to having some options you know to your point so we know what we're choosing um, and to your point too Elijah I don't think they're mutually exclusive I think you've raised some points about what we do with our budget obviously and we also have to do something with the building I mean we just we can't put it off anymore so my I think we as a board have to say we have to have a decision definitively what that number is um, may move but that by you know next you know town meeting we're proposing a bond of some sort well some of what I need sooner than later is just some feeling of where we're heading and the reason being that we've got money right now that's in, you know, allocated the building and grounds. 
that there's things we can do. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm reluctant to do anything, and this has been somewhat the case for a few years. Um, I'm reluctant to do certain things um, because you don't want to do something and then have it torn out mm -hmm. two years later. Well, are there things on that list that could be done that would stand no matter what? We're not going to build a new building, it sounds like. We're not going to have a new school. Um, there's some things in the boiler room, for instance, you know, around that. Um, there's some electrical work. Um, honestly, I don't see a project that's going to significantly change classrooms. And what, there's a couple reasons for this is there's a lot of, you know, th there's thinking outside the box, and which is good, but, you know, in the late 60s, they were thinking outside the box, and they built us the open area. And then... All over the state. And then we ended up putting it back. Um, here in the building, we've had people that have tried to go back to trying with open classrooms again, um, team teaching. It works for some, and then some... It, it doesn't work so well, and they end up closing those doors again. So, you know, we've got a, we've got a certain element of um, flexibility already built in, and I, I'm not sure I see us changing that. So, um, you know, an electrical project to improve the electrical in, you know, classrooms. I've got, I've got all kinds of extension cords um, feeding these projectors, for instance. That's something we need to address. I feel fairly safe doing that. Um, you know, um, you know the 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 overall building itself, I I feel is is in pretty good shape. Um, I I fully advocate for more skylights. Um, I'm I'm guessing that one of the biggest things, if if you were to poll students and staff, would be more windows. Yeah. Well, the security people aren't going to be excited about more windows. But they're not going to mind skylights. Um, we added three, two or three skylights when we did the renovation 25 years ago, and they've been just fine. They haven't leaked. No, nope, nothing significant. So. Um, two kinds of so you're looking for some some positive uh, direction for the board, so you can be more secure in, in telling us what what uh, renovations you can make with not so much concern about having it all undone later. Well, you know, for instance, I mean, we could do a library renovation on our own. I mean, it wouldn't necessarily need to be a big ticket. It, it's big enough, but I mean, it could be done through the regular budget. Well, would it, would it be helpful if, for example, um, we thought about uh, seriously now uh, the idea of, of building a, a new gym, and if, if we presented uh, a, a sketch of where it is, um, would that help you in terms of uh, thinking about the heating and ventilation system and the, the uh, air conditioning? Well, what, what, I, what would be helpful is to know the areas that are not going to disturb, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which I honestly think is the majority of this, this building over here. I mean, I mean, we may renovate science labs. I, I advocate for that completely. You know, I advocate for renovating that consumer science space. Um, you know, there's there's things we could do differently in this room for sure, um, but consumer okay. science. No idea what that Home is. Mac. Oh, okay. It's with a health class couple, talk. Yeah, no, I got um, that. There's yeah. um, the you know you could pull the auditorium no, out. You could pull that out of that space. Yeah. Um, you you know you might put something new in there, but that's not necessarily going to. Um, Disturb the surrounding <coughs> space. Okay. Yeah, that's um, right. That's right. Kaylee. No, I just have a couple a couple of questions, and I think your point, Amy, was essentially the time frame. So that way we don't kind of keep doing this, which is part of your, I would imagine, a frustration, Jeff. Um, so maybe if we have, if we're having our next meeting, the twenty first, maybe we could make a decision about what needs to happen before a major update renovation? Because you've given us lots of information, but if there's something like, here's the fridge that needs to be replaced, obviously we could do that without have that wouldn't necessarily be a part of the bond. And then I think yes. we could say, let's let's incorporate this 
whether it's with a smaller bond or within the budget somehow, um, we can kind of start to pick away at that really big list and then and then kind of earmark anything that's bigger to then be on hold for a potential Yeah, bond. and I would, I would say to um, John or, or, you know, to Patrick Kane, who I've also worked with many, many, on many projects. Um, in fact, Patrick and John both did the middle level and this auditorium 25 years ago. Um, take a look at that existing space and say, is there anything we can do? Um, there may be. I have another really quick question. Did you guys have a timeline for your project? You know, and I wanted to jump in here. Um, just after hearing our conversation, it sounds like more realistically, we're looking at, you know, do you have available space now that you're willing to rent out, um, have us come in, do some renovations, and have the Head Start program located in your space? Not talking about 2020, we're talking about this year. Yeah. Is there some classroom space? You know, preferably maybe even a separate entrance, similar to what we have going on at the COPEC or at the Albany School. Um, but this, this grant, you know, the funds are going to be released within a couple months. Um, I did put on here that this is an option, and you know we're in very early stages of conversation. Um, so just wanting to get and a feel as far as how the board is feeling about your current space, and, and if that's something you want to introduce. I think it would be super helpful. I mean, I, I think the general sense is that I've gotten from the board is that we're really interested in partnering with Head Start. Yeah. I think it might be really helpful to have some information about what specifically you need in a space so that way we could say, we could accurately say, yes, this very well might be available, or this is going to be a, a lot more than we have time for right now. So I'm thinking about like what kinds of bathrooms, what kinds of security, what kinds of office space. Like, I'm sure you already have all that already well, think, for your grant. And I think but, like before, um, you know, you put the cart before the horse, it's, it's yeah. figuring out whether or not that's the direction you want to go. Yeah. I think you have to answer that. And, and, you know, I don't think like maybe this is the time to do it. Um, but if you agree that yes, we want a partner, then let's move forward and we can get those specs down and talk about what that looks like. Well, let's take a, a straw poll right now, why don't we, without taking any official action. Uh, and I'll go around the table. Uh, I personally am um, keenly interested in, in, in a project with Head Start combining that for many reasons. Amy? Yeah, too. McNeil? Michael? Yeah, I'd like to partner. I don't see current space being available. There's certainly land available, but I don't know whether your budget can be used for new construction or how far it would go on on that. Yeah, I'm just worried about um, having to finalize this grant. Yes, you know, I'm doing Understood. negotiations right now. And, Absolutely. And if I say there's two classrooms that we're going to renovate and we're throwing this money in, then I get the green light. I just need to, to give the regional office in Boston some type of direction. Um, they love the idea. They, they're pushing for collaboration. Sure. Um, and all of our programs are really trying to blend um, different funding streams. There's all sorts of additional points that you Absolutely. get where you can do that co yep. cohabitation. Kind of like that, that build, build it and they will come. I'm just, let's get underneath the same roof right. and then we can build <laughs> what that partnership looks like. But, you know, step one is co-locating. Yeah. I don't know of 1,500 square feet in the short term that's available. I don't think it needs to be that much. That was a renovation that yeah. consisted of a, a completely new kitchen, separate bathrooms, and so forth. Um, we would, if, if you're strongly interested, we'd have to go back and really look at. I mean, that's, what that that's looks like. 32 by 48 or something like that. That's probably around 1,530 or mm -hmm. so square feet. Well, I mean, that's, that's two classrooms. Okay. So just thinking about it, I mean, I know there's one teacher on that end who has two classrooms, just goes back and forth between them. And then the well, lab right there isn't really... that's good. the case today, but next week that could change, you know. I mean, we I don't think we want to lose our flexibility. Well, it's also... Um, I mean, I'm, I under, understand they're wanting, you know, I've, I've actually been amazed at how difficult it's been to find a space. <laughs> For, you know, the, I mean, the, the idea of whether we can deliver on, on space needs yeah. is, is pretty critical, and, and I think we, we get that. But let's continue with the straw poll here, Kaylee. What do you think about that? Uh, 
combining um, with Head Start? Yeah, I think they're incredible, incredible opportunities. Um, I think if only the home ec room and the pathways room were available, that would be a, a great spot, personally. That would have been but, my, my but, best. Um, but, I think, but I also hesitate to jump into something right before we're about to totally revision the school as well. So I think they're to the cart before the yeah. horse idea. Um, but maybe, uh, obviously, we can't take any official action tonight. Um, but I definitely support some sort of partnership. Um, so I don't know if we need to put some. Maybe this is just a, just a straw poll. And Strumple. I think you're in Strumple favor. Is in of, favor. Yes. Right. Andrew. I'm in favor. Okay. So the, the idea is there, and I don't think we need to be nailed down into literally uh, thinking within the, even the present bounds of this classroom. I mean, if, if there was a grant available and the, uh, a good reason to build a, a, a structure to accommodate a Head Start now, which might, you know, later be used to uh, uh, accommodate some offices, and, and when the renovation is done here to pull Head Start into the building, then maybe that's a, a way that uh, that Head Start might consider uh, uh, an acceptable arrangement. So, you know, let's not confine ourselves to the footprint of, of this uh, plant. Can I ask a question? So, technically, the forestry program is in a building that's much bigger than its population, correct? Current population. Urban. Yeah. But that's not our building. I, we don't own the building. We own the land that it's on. Right. But so the question, because you've raised two separate issues. One is, for right now, is there a way that we can accommodate the Head Start in, in this general area, sort of under our large wingspan. And then when we do a renovation, we keep in mind that that's something that needs to be accounted for as well, which is two separate things. Because one of the things we can talk about, yes, we like it, but it'd be really great if you guys could kind of all sit together and say, hmm, I hadn't thought about this broom closet and this broom or whatever, because I, I, mean, I can look at the floor plan. But that's not our job as the board. Our job is to give you the, to go ahead and say, can you guys sort of figure it out? Mm -hmm. um, we're in support of this. If you can find a space that will work and we then commit when we renovate to find that space, then we've, we've got sort of a, mm -hmm. a match, as they say. Mm -hmm. um, it may not be permanent, but it'll be under our care. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that'll that be the long-term piece that you're saying, Amy, mm -hmm. is, that, is that that would be the long-term commitment. Right. To, yeah. Um, I have a really random, super quick logistical question, but why has the gym always been separate from the rest of the building? So there's this. There's it's technically two separate buildings. <laughs> and just, I guess the question is, we also have all of our, like the boiler room and everything that heats and powers the building, pretty far away from the main part. Of, I'm just, I'm just curious as to if there's a reason why there's so much space between the two, or if it's purely aesthetic. There's nothing kind of about it. That was a joke. That was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't always separate because it was. So, so the gym was an add-on. No, no, it's no. two separate buildings. It's two separate. As a matter of fact, the breezeway didn't even have walls when they opened the school. Okay, so there, it's just the way it's been. Okay, now, cool. I wasn't sure if there was the like a boiler room. Um, a lot of that was centered around the need to be able to back tractor trailers up to dump the chips. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's probably what drove that more than anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's cool. 23 years or 30 yeah. years. Yeah. 23. Just, I was 25. I've always been curious about that. Ironically, they're two separate buildings, but there's right. breakers for the middle level that are in our office in the gym side. Right. I don't know <laughs> why. But. Okay. Blame the architects. Yeah. So in terms of money, I've got like a 30,000 foot level observation, which is right now. Um, Greensboro, Woodbury, Hardwick, and Standard are in the process of beginning to merge the elementary schools, pre-K through six, and despite as advertised, it probably is not going to save a penny for any of the towns. In fact, it's probably going to be fairly disruptive to taxpayers when they start to understand the responsibilities in the different towns for this newly merged district. 
which you we might end up with some disgruntled taxpayers. So if you've got a lot of pissed off taxpayers and you say from Hazen, mm -hmm. they might not be able to make the division between Hazen is asking for this much money <clears throat> and the elementary piece is asking for this much money now. They might just be pissed off that all these schools are asking for so much money simultaneously. And I'm just saying that could be a consideration that could drive the conversation about how much money you want to ask for. Yeah, and I think that's every year, frankly. Well, this is going to be, a, is I think this is going to be particularly different uh -huh. because suddenly the taxpayers in all these merged districts are going to be responsible for three separate schools, which all have physical needs. So it's going to shift around the responsibility, you know, the tax rates in these different towns in ways that's unanticipated for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that that's why we need to watch over this year, because I think it may be the difference between us saying we're to going to do a three million dollar. Right, you have to pay attention right. to what happens this right. year. But I don't. I think that I I agree, and I also think we need to keep moving forward. Oh, like, I, I do think too. we should yeah. just right. dream and then you know modulate our dreams to say what it is that they that we how can we do this in a way that's going to. Um, create the school and the space that's going to be conducive to the programs that we want. Um, because we waited for Hardwick, because we've been talking about this for years, so we waited for Hardwick's bond, and went, okay, now coast is clear, and then it became unclear very quickly, like a 12-car pileup right. right in front of us. Well, in the past, and, I, and I've discussed this with several different superintendents over the years, if we had a clear future of knowing what the district looks like, and it's, I think this has been up in the air for quite a while. Um, I think that there's things that we could do in the allocation of students around the whole district that would change things for us. It could change things for the elementary schools, too. But it seems like we're, we're moving away from that um, recently. But you mean a larger OSSU model? Yeah. Merging, like, central and southern? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I know Lakeview has huge physical needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it becomes a merged district, and that district becomes responsible for those needs of, I mean, they were talking about a two or three million dollar bond. If this entire district now, then the, you know, the taxpayers in Hardwick are going to be on the hook for paying for that, which could cause some unsettled feelings. It, it's off to the races. You know, there's going to be a consolidated board. Uh, I don't know what the representation is going to be. I mean, there's constitutional uh, limitations on how the board can be composed in terms of representation. It's still one person, one vote. So the interesting thing about the consolidated board is if you were thinking way ahead and, and you thought it was politically impossible for a town to close down its school. Well, what if you combined all the elementary schools and had most of the schools say to one school district, we can handle all your stuff. We've got to close you down. Well, the thing is, is by law, for the next two years, you cannot close any of these facilities. Unless the town wants to. Right. Yeah. And so you. that's why I'm saying, you know, to introduce something from Hazen into this um, milieu where, you know, all of these three schools are in all likelihood going to remain open for the next two years mm -hmm. and with an uncertain future beyond that, if you ask for money for Hazen at that particular time before the dust has settled on what a consolidated elementary school district may look like, that could really affect, you know, voter sentiment you know, on how much money they're willing to put into spending I don't wanna, a lot of money on the high school. I don't want to so, upset the small towns, but I guess they're already upset. Um, you know, one idea I always had is if we could turn this into a 9 through 12 school and make Hardick Elementary a 5 through 8 middle school um, and then build a new K-4 school that 
took care of whoever needed to be taken care of. Um, Pre-K. Pre yeah. Um, then we, if we were, if we took the middle level out of here, well, then we've got a whole lot of new options for for Head Start or other vocational pro type programs um, within this building. Um, that's the grand vision. Probably yeah, it's not going to happen right away. Not currently. The funding stream doesn't let us do vocational and get the same. Funding. Well, no, but I think we've got a lot of vocational things going on. Um, I, uh, you know, one thing when I say you know when you say the the modern classroom looks different, um, there's hands-on projects going on in English class. Sure that Absolutely. you wouldn't have used to see. So it would be nice to have more multi-purpose spaces for that. I mean, that's one classroom thing that would be different. Um, so anyway, I mean, if, if, if eventually we could move in a direction like that, I think that opens a lot of new options for us. Right now, it doesn't appear we're, we seem to be moving away from that. But there, not yeah, close. there are a lot of uh, issues in terms of uh, the physical proximity, but I think one thing that's not going to change is the big picture, is uh, that if we establish uh, this place as, as an arts and music center and an innovative collaboration with the community, I think that is going to be the foundation that's going to be the motivation for this push. And if uh, people are more willing to buy into that and see that it makes sense, then those kinds of details, you know, are, are just details without any kind of big picture. Uh, and we're stuck with what we have. We may get there where you want in the next 20 years or 30 years in terms of a high school and a middle school. But even so, even if that happens, we need the big idea now to make this place the mm -hmm. high school for arts and, and, yeah. and sciences and, and music because that's what we do best and to integrate it with the community. You know, one thing I've always pointed out, particularly in budget discussions, we have the similar needs whether we've got 100 kids in the building or 500 kids. I mean, your, your, your drama, you know, it's a, it's a matter of square footage. Um, and, you know, sports, it, it takes just as much effort to prepare for a Division Four basketball game as it does a Division One basketball game. Um, you know, and I, I also make that same argument around staffing. Um, this building is 80,000 square feet, whether there's 500 kids in it or 300. Um, and so a lot of the maintenance costs and the needs are, are, are comparable. But... Um, Okay. You know, the auditorium, I had, I had thrown an idea out initially about doubling the space um, of the existing auditorium and um, moving some of those classrooms elsewhere. You know, maybe something like that could make sense. I think we're, we're thinking along those lines, um, I mean, in terms of building the gym there and moving the auditorium yeah. there. Okay, now that this is a lot of stuff to process tonight. Katie, I think you, if you get the drift of the board, we're very interested and, um, you know, let's work on making the space for you. And, and Jeff and, and the staff are the ones with the, in the trenches that can work out the details of, of how that is to be. And we definitely need a plan, and, and you need a plan for uh, the, the Boston authorities. Can I just Are there any? Yes. That, Steve, really quickly. Yes. So, just for action, because you guys probably need action, I imagine. Yes. So, would we, we can't take any tonight? But are you essentially saying that they should meet with potentially Jeff and the administration to figure out if it's possible <coughs> to currently <coughs> fit Head Start in and what that would look like, and then if it is, to then come back to the board and present. Okay we found this one room or these two rooms or whatever, or no, we didn't. Um, so do we want to give a timeline for that? Because your grant is coming in in March, mm -hmm. so do we want to say for the February meeting, if there is an action that the board can take, that we should take it for Head Start then, mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that? Well, you know, that's a good point, because we don't know your time commitments with respect to the, the funds. but. Uh, uh, we would need to make a productive conversation with uh, the staff and Jeff uh, 
the, the square footage, which I don't want to rehearse the whole conversation there, but uh, the square footage uh, proposal included some uh, kitchen space and bathroom space. Well, they may already be here. So maybe that can go out of that square footage uh, 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 estimate. We really need one classroom. The idea of two classrooms with, if you're going to invite the all early ed uh -huh. within the space. Uh -huh. But again, that can be long term. Exactly. And so if we're looking at, I would love to see a new classroom space this upcoming fall. So, um, you know, September, if we're ready to roll, even if it's in one classroom, and we're sitting at this table when we're talking in 2020 and 2021 about renovations, we also have the, you know, the ability to apply for more funding as well. Right. So we just want to get our foot in the door and right. use this as an opportunity to say, hey, like, let's form a partnership and then see where that There's goes. a conversation that David and I can have. I just thought of something that maybe could work. Yes. Audrey. So just to clarify, if you had one classroom this year and then, you know, this does pass, the auditorium moves, those spaces move up, we rearrange a bunch of classrooms and two open up, That is is the money that you're getting from this grant, does it have to be used for renovation this year or can that money be used for renovation two, three years down the line? And that's something I need to go back and ask. I, okay. You know, I'm... If, you're looking at major renovations. I don't mm -hmm. think it makes sense to do this Got huge enough. renovation. Exactly. And maybe if this is the, the time that we're we're now renters, we're renting this space for now, mm -hmm. and we want to be a part of the table, um, yeah. sitting at the table later on. Mm -hmm. I think that that's fair enough. Okay. Well, we're very interested in this, and and uh, you know what more can we do to encourage uh, talks as, as soon as possible? Uh, you don't need to ask us. You know how we feel about it. Uh, and, you know, whatever magic uh, the, the staff and the faculty can do to, to make this happen in stages, uh, I, I think you'll find that the board would be very open and welcoming of those. The other thing that occurs to me was it might be helpful to come down and visit you guys. Oh, please have a meeting in our space. <laughs> well, I'm not please thinking about all that. that. But I'm just it's very humbling. If I were yeah. familiar it's with your programming and what the needs are and what things look school, like, it might be easier for me to see <laughs> what that would yeah. look like. Have you been to the Star Space? Maybe there's more space. Down. Down. <laughs> I'm booked through. Um, you can see our office space. <laughs> yeah. You can see our office space. Actually, yeah, so I, it can't be tomorrow. Oh, it was in the paper. It was with Bernie, us with Bernie, Bernie Sanders' yeah. aide said that it was absolutely criminal. I mean, our company, it, our, our, our literally staff, our space is separated by tall sheets of cardboard, and it's the width of our desk. Those are, that's our office space. We have four desks. What are the hours yes, that the kids are present with you? 8 to 2.45. So it's going to be a six-hour day um, with theirs. I believe it will be so, nine hundred and twenty days. Very good kids. Yeah, so. I don't know if you have a sense of what goes on down there, but it's going to be helpful. Yeah, I guess we'll do Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a mentorship. Do you guys think you would you would head down there together and, and check out the premises? Don't come at nap time, I'll hurry. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the time. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it would be helpful if yeah. I, I, at the next meeting, if you could hear from some of our partners from COPEC, um, just to hear what that collaboration looks like. Um, I can bring you a sample of what we have as a contract as well. <coughs> the models are in place. So it's simply yeah. you know, doing it a little bit differently where we're not in the elementary school, but it's at the high school, which is you know, world of opportunities as far as learning. Um, our classroom itself could be a learning environment for the high school students who are interested mm -hmm. in coming in mm -hmm. and doing some volunteering work, building a program off of that. It seems like the opportunity is here and now, and, and let's 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 grab it for all it's worth. Are there any more uh, comments uh, before we wrap up tonight? Uh, what I'm going to do is is try to collect all this together, put it uh, comprehensively as possible, and um, use those ideas to start working on actually making conceptual changes to the space enough so that we can deliver to an architect and enough time. To, to get something ready uh, for a vote, possibly, uh, not this year, but some other time, like next year.
but we need to raise the issue this year so that people are aware of it. Well, you know, coincidentally, I've been drafting the uh, the annual report for the school, and uh, I'm That's kind of leading yeah. into this, care. right? Great. So Absolutely. it's due Friday. I'll try to circulate it. Exactly. Million. You got to start hearing it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yes. Sorry yes, when you say that dollars. Steve, I just um, I like throw in a bigger picture element as we talk about <laughs> these new changing educational theories and practices and whatnot in a shifting building environment. Would it be prudent to also consider how that might impact um, contracts with teachers on how that might shift out of the norm as we adjust for a new learning environment? Then maybe we think about parallel what that means for a teacher in this building and what that contract may look like, and I don't know what it would be. Um, but just to, just to have that conversation parallel to we want the best students, we want the best teachers, we want the best contracts and work conditions and agreements so that those teachers feel rewarded, but there may be more in line with where we're going, not where we've been. Mm -hmm. Just a, mm -hmm. I know it's a big can of worms, but well, that might be something parallel we keep. We'll have to mind. get there eventually. Yeah. I mean, we might as well start putting it in the hopper right now. When you guys are thinking about renovations, are you considering the tech center doing them? No. 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 This, this is strictly would be big, bigger than that. Hey, do, yeah. Do I mean, they are. Well, I mean, like electrical stuff. I mean, is there any part of it that you can partner with the tech center to? Um. As part of their learning and part of your Japan. renovations and who knows, save money. I don't know. You know, they're with them seventeen miles apart. Um, they have come up, like they came and did the roof on the log cabin. Yeah. Um, that's probably a little more, um, I think they came in and did some rewiring in the sugar house, which was their program. Um, small. Absolutely. Okay, uh, any more comments? Any more comments? If not, um, let's adjourn the meeting so I can get started on putting these notes together. <laughs> By Friday. Awesome. Is disappointed that we don't have that large stack of papers. That yeah, we where's our sign? Yeah. Circulate around. <laughs> Goodness. No. The 21st, David. <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? Yep. yep. So there's a motion to adjourn. Any discussion on that motion? Here and then let's move to the vote. All those in favor of adjourning say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstain. Meeting adjourned at 8.05. 8 <laughs>